I want to bring in Waseda University economics professor Masazumi Wakatabe. He says the BOJ should actually be adding more stimulus to stoke inflation before the sales tax hike goes into effect in 2019. So you are on a different spectrum than most economists who say that they're on the tightening. They should be if there is going to be any type of move on a tightening path. What are you seeing that others don't? Well, you know that there is still a difference between the 2% uh, inflation targeting and the current status uh, in terms of inflation rate. And uh, we are going to have, actually the government, the Prime Minister Abe has already committed himself to raise the consumption tax. So the last time consumption tax was uh, raised, that was 2014. Mm -hmm. The uh, inflation rate uh, plummeted. So that, you know, that if you see that coming, that the Bank of Japan has to prepare for an extra sort of measures. Now, I think that VOJ is kind of content or satisfied with the current situation because, uh, you know, stock price is uh, going up and the exchange rate is kind of stabilized at a very comfortable level. But still, it's, uh, there's a question uh, whether, you know, that the current policy is uh, enough to uh, raise the inflation rate to uh, 2%. I think this is a very interesting point to bring to the table. And certainly the consumption tax has been pushed off to at least 2019. That, mm -hmm. that seems pretty clear. Interesting, too, that I think one, another thing people are looking for at this meeting is to see Ikoishi Kataoka, mm -hmm. one of the newest members of the right. Board of J, the youngest by far, who exactly. dissented last time saying, no, BOJ has to be ready to do more. Will he dissent again? Will we hear any conversation around that? And certainly at the press conference afterwards, Governor Kuroda is going to be asked about that, that there's another dissenter if he mm -hmm. sees merit in that, in addition, of course, to questions of staying on at the BOJ. I think that the, the Mr. Kataoka uh, is going to say no. I mean, that he's going to dissent once again, because uh, uh, the, uh, the, for the, the, if you compare the last time to this time, there hasn't been any sort of a major change. And the, so that the, the consumption tax will be raised. Uh, in 2019, and the economy is good, but I think it's not still enough. Uh, so I would say, you know, that Mr. Kataoka will uh, dissent, mm -hmm. and but I think that the, the still uh, the Mr. Kuroda is comfortable uh, enough to uh, have the majority in the monetary policy committee. So uh, there is no sign of a sort of a, a big revolt. Uh, happening in the monetary, po uh, monetary policy committee. Right. That's my guess. Yes. Uh, Masuzumi, you know, I just want to get back to that point, though, uh, again about uh, you know put, put it, pressing the you know the the foot mm -hmm. to the pedal and putting more stimulus in. You know, there is a big difference here, though, from back in 2014, right. which is, of course, now we're seeing global central bank tightening. Right? Right, right. Rates are on the rise. You saw that today in the treasury markets and sure. how unstable it feels. So given that scenario, isn't it, doesn't that make it even more hard, harder for the Bank of Japan <laughs> to do what you're saying, Both right? Both of those things. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that the, the, there is a fundamental difference between the other central banks, such as the Fed and the Bank of England. Uh, and the Bank of Japan, because in the Bank of Japan was a sort of latecomer in terms of quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that uh, 2008, the major central banks uh, like the Fed and the BOE uh, engaged in the quantitative easing. Uh, the Bank of Japan is, was sort of five years late. So in the sense that we haven't yet seen sort of the, the, the exit. The effects, I see. Right. Okay. And the Fed in the United States and the Britain, uh, certainly the inflation rates uh, are sort of picking up, but uh, not in Japan. So that mm. the, the Bank of Japan has to take into account that that, that is a goal, they said, you know. Uh, you know, I have, I have some sympathy, and I think, you know, you mentioned this too, that maybe on the fiscal side of things is not really helping the Bank of Japan, even though they're really at the limits of what they can do, right? I want to throw up this quick chart to go to that inflation conundrum, six, uh, 6077 on the Bloomberg, it's not just the Bank of Japan, right? It's not just the, the sort of Japanese, uh, you know, animal spirits that need to be boosted, the fact that we're looking at decades of deflationary mindset. There's inflation missing as a component of growth pretty much everywhere. So in your mind, do you see this as, as a Japanese problem or a broader global structural problem that we haven't figured out the answer to yet? Well, that's a good question, but I would say that, you know, that the Bank of Japan, well, in a sense, the Japanese economy was a forerunner to the global phenomena. So that's, uh, but the, uh, the sort of the policy reaction we should do uh, is pretty obvious. I mean, that we cannot contract monetary policy 
And actually, it's, you know, uh, the, right now the employment figures are quite good in Japan. Uh, but still, we don't have the inflation picking up. So that's a kind of golden opportunity for the central banks to uh, tap on. So why, don't we, why doesn't the BOJ uh, do more? Uh, given you know that's a good uh, employment figures are coming up and inflation is too low. Well, and of course, uh, Governor Kuroda has has said he sees that like the small businesses, small and medium businesses, starting to raise wages. I've heard mm -hmm. that when I've been in mm -hmm. Tokyo covering the BOJ. I want to move on to this question of yield curve right. control because there was already talk before this global bond market sell off with yields rising mm -hmm. that the BOJ might be willing to move it up a little bit in 2018, not exactly zero, maybe a little range. And if I, I just want to, what we're talking about, call up hashtag BTV3032, and what you can see is the it, the the U.S. bond market. Market, the UK gilt market, uh, the German bund market, all of them have been selling off. And here we have a little bit of move up. At the very least, you think, number one, that the BOJ will change its bond purchase target. Mm -hmm. But more broadly, will we maybe get a hint that the BOJ is ready to say, you know, we don't have to keep it exactly at zero? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's the, uh, the we're going to have to think about reevaluate the effectiveness of this uh, yield curve control. Um, it's the, there's no sort of theoretical uh, sort of background to this uh, yield curve control, uh, except to say that you know the Bank of Japan now uh, can engage in a sort of quasi-expansionary policy without e buying sort of lots of GGBs. Uh, but the, the question is that is it is this really effective in terms of raising up inflation expectations uh, in Japan? You know so. Uh, uh, let's say that even the global cons uh, con uh, circumstances are sort of uh, moving towards the pushing up the, the, uh, the long-term interest rates, but then you know the BOJ can you know maintain its course and to have the sort of the maximum impact on the Japanese economy. So they can actually uh, have uh, the, the positive influence from the abroad. Uh, Wakatabi-san, do you see the yen still being a problem for 2018? Well, I don't necessarily say, you know, that the yen is a problem. I mean, that's, uh, the yen is a sort of the mirror image of the inflation uh, or, you know, Japan's uh, uh, the value of money, the currency. So that in a sense that if the inflation rate picks up in Japan, uh, you know, that's, that's the, the exchange rate would be sort of uh, uh, determined uh, inconsistent with other currencies and so on and so forth. So, I don't say necessarily you know, the, the yen would be a problem in 2018. The problem might be the BOJ stance. You know. uh, if the BOJ starts to contract uh, or uh, starts to be seen as contracting, then I think that the yen might appreciate against other country currencies.